Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's episode because we're gonna be harvesting our peppers. I've been looking forward to this episode for quite some time because anytime it comes to, uh, to harvesting, you guys love harvest videos. I love doing harvest videos, but I also love harvesting peppers. It's certainly a crop that I really enjoy growing just because of the different diverse colors and flavors, shapes and sizes. It, for me, it's a lot like growing tomatoes. And so I love growing peppers. And this year we have quite a few of them. And this year was actually a really good year for peppers. Now, one fun fact about uh, peppers, growing peppers here in Michigan, before we get started, is that we don't always have the luxury of getting fully ripe peppers. A lot of you have asked this question and, and have asked, Luke, how come whenever you do a pepper harvest, almost all your peppers are green? And that's a really good question. The reason why is because here in Michigan, being in the Great Lakes region, not all of Michigan is like this, but the coastal regions of Michigan, we're on the East Coast, so we're by Lake Huron, we get some very cool nights. Um, anywhere, well, anywhere in Michigan in late August, early September, sees nights that are in the 60s to you know, high 50s. And the cool nights actually uh, draws moisture off of the lake. And because the lake actually is warmer than the land, it's incredible how warm the water is right now. It's good to swim in, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, the lake is actually warmer than the land. And what happens is when you get cool nights like that, it pulls the humidity off the water and then drops it on the cool land. And most of our mornings, in fact, we don't, we get so much condensation and dew that we don't even have to irrigate anymore. We do not have to come in here and water because the nights are so cool that the plants pretty much uh, condense the water. It runs off the leaves and runs into the soil. So we don't have to, we do not have to water at all, which is another kind of cool fun fact. But the downside to those cool nights and really wet mornings and stuff is that a lot of our peppers start to rot. So that's what also leads to things like powdery mildew on our cucumbers and zucchinis, uh, pumpkins and things like that. Um, and so it's just a reality. It's something that we have always dealt with and that's why we don't get many ripe peppers. We do occasionally get some and if we get some, great. If not, we just eat underripe peppers. I don't really taste that big of a difference anyways. Homegrown is still, any, still better than uh, by a long shot than anything you're gonna get from the grocery store. And if I really need like a colored bell pepper, I'll just go support a local farmer at our farmer's market. So totally not a deal breaker for me. Um, and a lot of those farmers, you might be asking yourself, well, Luke, if your local farmers can get ripe, ripe peppers, how come you can't? Well, it's because they grow under things like high tunnels, uh, greenhouses and things like that, where uh, the nights stay warmer. They're protected from, from all that condensation and dew. Whereas we just, we just grow we just grow in our normal uh, conditions, so no protection. Um, you know, we could, if we wanted, we could build a little hoop house over this and protect them if we really wanted to. But for me, like I said, I really don't mind eating a green pepper. For me, it's not that big of a deal. So, all right, let's get, uh, let's get back here and harvest. We have quite a few different varieties, and I do think that this year is gonna be quite a bumper crop. So the first pepper I'm gonna be picking is called Pasilla Bajillo, and I absolutely love this variety. It's a Mexican drying pepper, and so uh, in Mexican culture, they dry these peppers to use in mole. And mole is kind of like a chocolate pepper curry. So you use chocolate, you use these uh, Pasilla Bajillo peppers, and you use a little bit of peanut butter, and you make like a curry, and it is so incredible. We might even have a video on it, who knows? But this plant, is just absolutely loaded with peppers. Look at all these peppers, check this out. I've never seen a year so prolific for the, I mean, just wow. It doesn't even do justice. It just truly does not do justice for how many peppers are under here. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this, this is incredible. This is so beautiful. See, this is what happens right here, folks. This is exactly what happens, see? Cool nights. Cool nights, pepper started to ripen. Look at that. See, rot. Well, we'll use it for seed production. Yeah, see, here's another one. Cool nights. It's a bummer, we'll use it for seed production, that's okay. We need some, we need some seed for next year anyways. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Oh, 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 wow. This is a huge one. I popped the top off there, but look at that. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Let's 
there's a little better view of the peppers. Just, it, it's outstanding. I mean, I've never, like I said, I've never seen so many peppers on a plant like this. So I'm just gonna get here, I'm just gonna pull the rest of these because there's so many that uh, it'll be a 10 minute video just harvesting these. So I'm gonna pull these all off and I'll show you what I get when I'm done. But this one actually, oh, look at this one. Yes. So this is what they look like. They look this just absolutely beautiful, beautiful kind of a chocolate brown with some red, with some red veins running through them. Just a beautiful pepper. I mean, absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. So here is the underripe version that, you know, it'll, so it'll ripen up. This one even has a little bit of a soft spot here, but as you can see, green, chocolate. They look almost like mole. <laughs> when you make up mole, it's this color here. So yeah, absolutely stunning. So there we go. There is our whole harvest from just two plants. This is absolutely incredible. I mean, seriously, like I said, these peppers are giant and there's a ton of them. All right, and now we got some bell peppers. Now these are a red pepper. As you can see, got some beautiful red peppers starting to come on here, but I gotta pick them early so they don't get soft because as you can see here, um, this is just from the dew. Look at this, this is just, these peppers are wet. And what happens is the moisture sits around this, the stem here, and just uh, it just sits here and rots it out. So we really we really do not have the luxury of letting these sit on here much longer. They're just <laughs> they're just totally wet with dew. So I'm glad I came out here and, and decided to do this because we might have lost them. Three beautiful peppers from just a single plant here, and I've got another couple in the back here that I'm going to harvest up. All right, now I wanna show you the pepper and sini pepper. Now this is a Greek pepper. I love it for making things like Greek salads, but we also grill them up, use them in lots of different dishes uh, when it comes to cooking. But the production is amazing. The flavor is out of this world. And uh, I don't know why I didn't grow more than one plant, to be honest, but check this plant out. This is gonna blow your mind. And if you have never tried growing pepper and sini, this might be the catalyst to make you wanna grow it. All right, check this out, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is one plant. This thing is falling over with peppers. Just look at this. Look at how many peppers are on this plant. Look at how many peppers are on this plant. This thing is just absolutely, it's more, it's more pepper than plant, to be honest. Holy smokes, it's just incredible. And the flavor is a perfect balance of sweet and heat. And this is actually one of the only peppers we can consistently get to ripen up. Now we will harvest them green like this, but we will also harvest them red like this. And they taste incredible. They're so sweet. They taste almost fruity, but they have, as you get closer to the seeds, they have just a little bit of heat. And I love that. It's amazing. Yeah, this plant just keeps producing and keeps producing. And it looks like it's actually getting ready to flower, which means as soon as I get these peppers off, it's gonna, it's gonna force another flush of peppers, which is great because we have just enough time that if it does get some peppers forming, uh, probably within the next week or two, we could actually get some ripe peppers uh, by the time fall comes. There's that much time left in our growing season. Even though the nights get cold and the ripe peppers rot, the green peppers don't rot. So we can, I mean, if it forms some green peppers like this, we can still get those to ripen up and, uh, and get, those, get those in the kitchen. So I'm, uh, I'm not gonna leave, or I'm not gonna take the plants out. I'm gonna leave them in because a lot of people, they pull their plants out after they harvest their peppers and you really shouldn't you really should wait because these peppers they're uh they're they kind of come in flushes they really like you to harvest before they produce more so that's why we want to that's why we're even to harvest the green ones the red ones are going to come off for sure but even the green ones because that way it's going to really open up it's going to free up some more energy for the plant to produce more peppers now the next pepper i want to show you is called the king of the garden for a reason this is the Giant Marconi and the Corno de Toro. Now Giant Marconi is a beautiful Italian grilling pepper. They produce really large, really large peppers. This one I just harvested from this plant right here, but as you can see, this plant produces peppers that I'm gonna pull this one even though it's still green, are huge. Now this is small for a Giant Marconi, but they do turn red. And I've got this one right here. This is about as big as they get. 
Look at how big that sucker is. This thing is just massive. Now these, like I said, are giant Marconi. And then just next door is kind of its closest relative called Corno de Toro. Now giant Marconi and Corno de Toro, are, Corno de Toro are in the same, uh, they're in the same family of pepper and they're called bull's horn peppers. And that's why, uh, that's actually what Corno de Toro means is uh, bull's horn. And um, they have Corno de Toro yellow, Corno de Toro red, and they also have giant Marconi, which is just kind of a, you know, you might have a beef steak, uh, beef steak style tomato, and you might have an ox heart, which is a beef steak style tomato, it's just given a different name. And so giant Marconi and uh, Corno de Toro are in the same family, and uh, they produce just absolutely beastly huge peppers. All right, now this over here, this is the Corno de Toro red. And as you can see, these peppers are just as big, maybe even just a tiny bit bigger, but absolutely prolific. Just insane. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how the plant stands up with all these peppers, but gorgeous. Oops, absolutely gorgeous. Bring these over close to you guys so you can see just how big these are. Look at this. Look at these peppers. Oh my goodness. They're absolutely monolithic. Now, as I've said, our peppers did really well this year. This is actually probably one of the healthiest plants that we have as well. Just look at how beautiful and green these leaves are. The plants just did so well. And all we did was grow them in compost and we used trifecta as fertilizer as we always do. And always, that question always comes up, Luke, what do you feed your plants with? That's all we do, it's really all we do. And uh, we, let, we kinda let mother nature do the rest, but these plants are just loaded with jalapenos. Absolutely stunning. Now it's funny. Uh, once a year, we will uh, we'll kind of run into this, and um, it's been raised in the question uh, in the comments box. Luke, my jalapenos are running really small, and my jalapenos started out really big, and they just got smaller. I honestly don't know what causes that, but it happens to us as well. You know, we'll have jalapenos that'll be fully ripe, but they just they just run small. There's really nothing different and they're not, it's not like it's a genetic issue. They taste like jalapenos. They produce like jalapenos. You know, it's, it's a jalapeno for, for all intents and purposes. It's a jalapeno just like any other jalapeno would be. They just run small. And, um, you know, they, like I said, these are, these are fully ripe. As you can see, they're starting to get their little kind of, their cracks on the skin. This one right here is starting to um, turn black. And then after that, it turns red. So, I mean, these jalapenos are ripe but they're just so dang small this year. But the first jalapenos we had, they were nice and big. I just don't know, you know, I just don't know what, uh, what causes that, but it doesn't bother us. Oh, I forgot. I actually had one more surprise pepper plant that I threw in here and I forgot to mention, it's actually called Bulgarian carrot and it's behind this, uh, it's actually kind of getting shaded out by this beautiful uh, jalapeno plant, but the Bulgarian carrot uh, produces these absolutely stunning orange peppers. Now, as a cautionary note, these orange peppers, they, uh, they mean business. I was not aware of how hot these were and I treated them just like I would a banana pepper. Big, big, massive mistake. These things are hotter than, uh, they're hotter than anything I've had in a long time. These, now they're not as hot as like a habanero. So if you're a pepper head or a chili head, you'll think I'm a wuss, but I don't really like that spicy of food. Jalapeno is kind of where I top out, but I popped one of these suckers in my mouth with some hummus. Let's just say it hurt just as bad going in as it did going out. So check it out. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Just gorgeous. I'm so happy with this year's pepper haul. I mean, this thing is just loaded. And we have eaten a lot of peppers off these plants that obviously are not in this bucket, but they're in our stomachs. So, you know, I'm, this is a significant haul for a, just an all at once pepper pull, but there will also be more peppers coming on these plants in subsequent weeks because the season is not yet over. So we're gonna leave the plants in, they're gonna keep producing, but that is a really good pepper harvest from just uh, 12 pepper plants. So I'm really loving it absolutely loving it. I can't wait to get these inside and eat them up. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya.